Welcome to the family with Mike Gelfand and Andy Bram Bernard. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have breaking news to kick off the show. Yes, Just we do. 60 seconds ago, two minutes ago, something like that. Uh, kind of sad news in some ways, in other words, in other ways not. But, uh, I mean, it's sad because basically this guy and Gelfand were the same type of person all the way. And uh, I got to reveal it to you, Mike's going to crush you, but O.J. Simpson just died. I'm 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 totally shocked. I uh, <laughs> I guess uh, you know the I, 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 headlines come into my head. There's going to be a lot of a lot of people playing off the glove mm-hmm. thing, you know. Oh, there's no doubt, Mike. It's already starting because the coffin every... fits, you know that yeah, kind of thing. Exactly. I will tell you, and I'm not kidding. When, when I see that pop up, I go to several different channels to see their take on it. Mm-hmm. which I was just doing for the last 15 minutes because he just died a, a very short time, a half an hour ago, something like that. Yeah. Something like that in any case. But um, every single reporter, every one of them so far has said, in my opinion, he did commit double murder. <laughs> oh, really? That's oh, a really? shock. Yeah. <laughs> Where the bold stance. <laughs> <laughs> the bold, the bold stance. How many, how many years ago was that? Now thirty. A lot, yeah. God, more than, I think it was more. Wasn't it like ninety two? Was it ninety two? It was a long time was a ago. Long time. I remember I was down in Florida, um, uh, and uh, you know when he was on trial, I, I sort of, I sort of was went down there to cover the trial. Oh, you did? I didn't. Yeah. Know that. Of course, I couldn't get into the courtroom. But, oh yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But you know, I still ca- I think I captured the the ambience, you know. Well, I will say this: they say that cancer killed OJ, but I'm not going to stop until I find out what the real killer was. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> You're not going to stop, Andy. Mm-mm. You know, it's, it's it is sort of hard not to celebrate his death, isn't it? Not yes. celebrate, just so much as riff off of. Y- yeah, well. I Which guess, to some people, I suppose, is a form of celebration. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm not suggesting that I'm going to pop open some champagne tonight or anything like that. But yeah, but I mean, he was a terrible person. He was a terrible. Yeah, person, but he, he wasn't even a good actor. That's true. Yeah. You know who just loved him though? Hmm. Just loved the guy was Philip Wise. Just loved O.J. Simpson. Oh, that's right. He he insisted on his innocence. A fellow he football did. player. Fellow football player. I love Philip. Philip's a great guy, but he yeah, oh, he thought the world of him. Yeah, he. Uh, well, you know, it is hard sometimes to um, come to terms with the fact that the person you idolize happens to be a, a, a murderer. Yeah. yeah, it's a problem. I could see that being a problem, but yeah, he just died, and literally every single reporter mm-hmm. that I saw on several different networks, I knew he did it. Yeah, he's like, like <laughs> uh, it was reportedly prostate cancer. Oh, with prostate cancer? In uh, a few years ago, he had it, and then he said he beat it, but I'm, it would appear he did not beat it. I remember going to uh, to see a comedy act. It was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Black, you know, what's his first name? Oh, Lewis. Lewis, yeah, Lewis, yeah. Phenomenal. And so went to see him at a, at a, was a couple people at a, at a casino, and uh, he started out, this was very shortly after after the murder, and he said, uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm just uh, taking a survey here. Um, how many of you, uh, just raise your hand if you think uh, OJ is guilty. And people raise their hand. And then he said, okay, now um, raise your hand if you think he's innocent. A few people raise their hand. And then he, and then he said, uh, he said uh, that's great. He said, I, I wasn't really taking a survey. It was an intelligence test. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lewis Black. Yeah. I do. He's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, no that happened though. when I was so young that it didn't really affect me. Like, I don't know anything. To me, O.J. Simpson is just like the double murder guy. I don't yeah. I yeah. don't register him as a football player or an actor or anything like that because I was maybe six years old when that happened, so I wasn't paying any attention to it. I will tell you this. I know a couple of guys, and I won't say who they are. You'd know them, actually. By you, I mean the audience would know them. But um, they told me, you know, Tom, you got to understand one thing about him. He was one of the dumbest human beings I've ever met. Mm-hmm. I guess the guy was just a moron, had no idea what was going on with anything. Yeah, that, that's what Prof said, you know, Pat Prof. Oh, sure. Yeah. Who, who uh, was involved in at least one movie that, that O.J. was in. And yep. he kind of said the same thing. He, he didn't take direction real well. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> he couldn't? Yeah, because he couldn't. Yeah, he didn't because he couldn't. No. How's Pat? I haven't talked to Pat in years. A good yeah, guy. you know, I haven't talked to him uh, in it's probably been a year now. I, I just assume he's very busy uh, with scripts. And, uh, you know, he's 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 one of these guys. He gets up at 5 a.m. He runs five miles. Yeah. And uh, and of course, he has a he has a, a nice office at home. And then when he gets back, you know, he he showers, he has breakfast and then he goes up up to uh, up to his room and puts on a suit and tie. Yeah, and then goes right, down to the basement where where his uh, office is yep. and just sits there and works all day, you know. But he, he apparently doesn't feel like uh, he's being a true professional unless he's got a <laughs> well, suit and tie on. Or at least maybe it's just a sport coat, you know. But you get the idea. Sure, absolutely. I don't I even have like a tie. I, I you know, got to be honest, I probably do, but I don't know where they are. I yeah, that's no the same thing here. I, I'm sure I have them, but where, I don't know. Yeah, that would... That, do you think the O.J. Simpson case changed life forever because you knew he was not going to be found guilty? You just absolutely knew it. Uh, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Or what the hell was that? I think a lot again? of people lost faith in the jury system that day. Yeah, probably. Well, and also just remember, he may have. This may have started a trend, and you'll you'll understand the comparison. One of the reasons that he wasn't found guilty was that the prosecutors were too busy having sex with each other. Yeah, mm. that's right. See, that could never happen again, though. Generally, that can wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could never happen again. No. You're absolutely right. Like Fawny Willis and that guy. Kind of, yeah. The yeah, same, the same thing. Yeah. So we have even bigger uh, news than O.J. Simpson dying. Really? Mm -hmm. Literally bigger news. Minnesota's largest candy store is moving. No. Yeah, not the one down south. There, south yep. of the Twin Cities. Yeah, it's moving. There's Where a Highway 169 project that's somehow causing them issues, so they're just moving. Where are they going? Uh, they're currently in St. Lawrence Township, and they're going to be moving to Jordan, the country. No, I'm <laughs> the city of Jordan, which is I think very close. It is, yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be on much bigger land. I think they're building a bigger building, so it's going to oh, be. Really? It's, it's already the largest, but it's going to be even bigger now. 2020, 2027, they say. Twenty twenty seven, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a while. Here. So, what's the name of it again? I can never remember the name of that place. Minnesota's largest candy store. What That's it's called. the name of it. Apparently, yeah. Oh, I hmm. thought it had a different name. I did. Doesn't I've been there. To. I have never been there. Galvan, you ever been there? No, no. Um, I was just thinking about the uh, the candy factory. You know, um, it was in St. Paul, right? Is it still there? The one that turned out that that made the nut goodies. Oh, and Pearson's. Pearson's, right? Pearson's Candy is Company. Still? Yeah, looks yeah. like it is still there. Well, that's good. Yep, right there on uh, what the hell is that street? Leading, I used to lead the WLOL radio. I remember that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had a friend who worked at a, at a candy factory. Um, he worked in the, in the uh, jelly bean section. And he told me that, um, that the, uh, the, uh, the licorice ones were the ones that had fallen on the floor and then they put it in the licorice oh. vat. Oh, I love licorice. Oh, licorice do is good. Oh, Why yeah. does everyone hate licorice? I don't know. I, I'm a big licorice guy I don't myself. Get it. Black licorice. I love. What a. Yeah. If, I wish my title was candy factory jelly bean section. <laughs> it's very whimsical. It really is. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. Yeah, the other Andy says it's moving a mile at most. Oh, so, okay. Oh, same, that's good. Same basic area. You can probably still see it from the same road, but there you go. When my, when my kids were, uh, were uh, at uh, Halloween ages, um, they, uh, my, my, my youngest son and my oldest son, they'd come home. And, uh, you know, they would devour a lot of the candy. Mm -hmm. Now, Max, my middle child, he, uh, he has sort of a different mindset. So he would come home with the bag full of candy and he wouldn't eat any of it right away because he had to log it all. He had to, he had to, he had to do the, oh, uh, sure. the inventory. Yes. And then he had, to, he, had, he had to know exactly how much of everything he had. And then he very slowly, like like over months, would eat it. Mm -hmm. So he didn't like licorice. He especially didn't like red licorice, which is it really licorice? Well, no, red licorice red? isn't even, it's just like strawberry or something. Yeah. What is, yeah. What is yeah. red licorice? I don't know. Yeah. I Does don't it know. actually have licorice in it? Hmm. I, probably not. 
but but I happen to like the red licorice, not like I like the black licorice. Oh, the Something best about the licorice. texture that I like too. So you know, these were like yep. tiny ropes. They they weren't you know the big thing. Like red vines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you if you pulled apart a red vine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So so one day uh, I, I he kept all his candy in his room. So like about it had been about a, a month since uh, Halloween, and uh, and I knew he was never going to eat. The, the red stuff because he didn't like it. So um, I went to his room and I thought, well, you know, he's not going to miss this. He's not, he's not even going to eat it. So I, I had one of these little tiny packages of the red stuff. And he comes home from school, goes up to his room, comes oh, down no. like in about seven and a half minutes oh, no. and says, you ate my licorice, didn't you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, well, of course I, I, I did. I said, you were never going to eat it. He said, that's not the point. <laughs> no, it's not the point, damn it. And I guess he was right. It's you still know? theft. Yeah, and, and it made me feel like very guilty. God, those were, you know, I still hold the record. Well, Mike, Michael Davitt and I do. Mike Davitt yeah. uh, was my buddy in the neighborhood. First or second grade, we were out. And by the way, can you imagine this? A couple of second graders wandering through the halls and the alleys and the streets of uh, North Minneapolis on Halloween night now. Can you imagine yeah. doing it? It wasn't a safe neighborhood back then, as yeah. a matter of fact. No, you could get shot, that's for sure. You could indeed. And by the way, a couple of second graders going down the alley uh, between 14th and 15th and Bryant, North of Minneapolis. We got robbed. <laughs> there you go. The guy, he was in full costume with the mask and everything, jumped out from behind a garage and robbed us both of our candy. Well, I will to be never fair, forget that. Every movie that takes place on Halloween ever has the bully jumping out sure. and taking the kids' candy. So that's uh, apparently it was just what happened for a very long time. Maybe time. that's what inspired him. Probably. Yeah, maybe yeah, he just saw Hocus Pocus and was like, of course, they, you guys would have been like in your 40s at the time, but. Still possible. Well, you know, be. being a baby boomer and and growing up on Creighton Avenue in St. Paul, it was it was just pure bedlam on Halloween. I mean, oh, I bet just just everything. You know, they, you, there were hundreds and hundreds of kids. It seemed like on on the block I lived on. So the good thing about that was every now and then you'd you'd run into someone who was giving out say full size Hershey bars, right? Oh. So just by changing a few little things in your costume, you could, you know, you could go to that, that guy's house like five times. Oh, because you just change your mask up a little bit? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and let's also now remember, not to forget, excuse me, that when I was 11 years old, I grew to be six foot one and I had this voice. So nobody <laughs> would give me candy. Mm. I wouldn't. That's for sure. 11 years old. Trick or treat. And they're like, get the <laughs> hell away from my house. What are you, 30? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would not give me candy. I do remember that because I thought I was like 15, 16, 17 years old. And, you know, that's that's interesting because I can still go trick-or-treating. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> I can trick-or-treat. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting uh, time. Well, you know, when you, you're doing a show and you hop on. I want to ask you guys one question, uh, both of you, because you, you probably have a pretty good call on this. We had two guests booked today on the morning show. Neither one of them bothered to show up. Do you think that's because everyone has a podcast now, so they don't need to do radio or podcast interviews anymore? It is entirely possible. Yeah, could it really be. Really is, really is now. I think we're you're at the point, and I don't care if we ever have guests again, unless they people want to come on, then that's different. Yeah, for one of the guests in particular, it says the publicist cannot find him. They couldn't find him. <laughs> well, we have guy. had that happen many times where the guests would just like vanish. But why would you do that? We're promoting your product. I don't know. You could have had some Doritos Tacos Locos the previous night. It's tough it. to be, yeah. It's tough to be a publicist when it, actually the job really requires you to be a probation officer. Yeah, uh, that's true. It's about it, isn't it? Yeah. That probably is a very, very good point. Now, I just, and again, I don't have anything against these people. Or I don't know one of them, Lisa Welchel. I've interviewed plenty in the past. But I, I, yeah, I've never had two guests on the same show cancel or not even cancel. They just didn't show we up. Just, yeah, weren't there. Yeah, and Las Vegas, there. you know, sometimes we had two members of the show who didn't show up, but you know, glug glug. <laughs> That's right. That Isn't that that was really odd? It's well, like yeah. you know, no, no, you don't understand. We're working. 
Well, plus the fact you had to understand that that show in Vegas started at 3.30 in the morning. True, but yeah, but our body didn't change any. No, it didn't. That's you know, true. I mean, it was still 5.30 in, in, in our body's time. Yeah, but that's I, true. Yeah, but I understand it. And I, I remember, so, you know, in those days, I would, I would start out, you know, like at 7.30 or something. Yeah, right. And so... So I just kept it my usual schedule when it was, you know, 5.30 there, I'd show up in this big auditorium. And I remember coming in there one day and they were just booing and jeering me <laughs> because I, I wasn't there at the beginning. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. But, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I just said, this is, this is, you know, I'm contractually obligated to show up here at this time. You know, I did not know it until, I guess, about a year and a half ago. But nobody does those trips anymore because we used to do a trip to either Vegas or Florida or I mean we did trips to everywhere every yeah. year we went on a trip at, at KQRS. Andy, oh yeah, we, we probably you know if we hadn't done that, Steve Wynn probably would have lost billions of dollars. It's probably true. Yeah, you might be right about that. But I I just um, I remember going on those trips. They cannot do those anymore. You know why that is? No, because no one will insure them. Yep. Ah. No, that's, I, I wouldn't, that's for sure. Well, yeah, think about that, because they had that one woman that fell down a flight of marble stairs that one year. Oh, uh, God, yeah. And apparently you are responsible. If they came in to see you, you're responsible for them being so there. That's stupid. Uh, it's in the fine print, huh? Fine print, baby. But, yeah, nobody does those trips anymore. I was even talking about going, you know, doing a casino visit, uh, bringing people, but nobody does them anymore because of the insurance, if you can even get it, is a, like a million and a half dollars for one day. Wow. It's a lot of money. I don't think any of us were worth that much. Oh, God, to this day. A million and a half dollars <laughs> per day. Yeah, Jesus not a lot man. of people are. But, yeah, that's how much life has changed. You can't even do appearances anymore because if somebody gets hurt, it's your fault, which I've never understood. How is it my fault that you drank and got hurt? That's these guys, you know, these casino guys, they think of everything. I mean, they, they don't, they don't, they don't blink at spending $3 billion to buy a casino. Right. But, uh, and I guess the buck stops not with them. I suppose that's true. I, I just glanced at the clock and I wanted to make sure that we got here. We're basically about 15 minutes into the show. And I want to thank Gelfan for not bringing up the twins because... Yeah, they won. They won. They beat the Dodgers. They beat the Dodgers yesterday in a day game, but that team is not very good. They're going to have problems. They are going to have a lot of problems. How's your Detroit team doing? Uh, you know, they're they're showing promise, just like last year. They're a little better this year. Yeah. Had off to a good start, and we'll find out, I guess. Uh, although the game today with Detroit was canceled. Because of weather? Yeah, bad weather in Detroit. Oh, yeah, because it moved from Minneapolis to Detroit. Because a couple of days ago, they canceled a game in Minneapolis, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, there you go. I suppose this time of the year, that does happen. But, yeah, I just, I really wish, I still don't understand if you're a multi-billionaire, why you don't want to spend the money to win. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good question because uh, it seems like it would be a good investment. You'd think, yeah. But the, the pitching is going to be a problem. Yeah, it really is. It hasn't it? shown up quite so much yet. The defense is uh, is more pretty good. You know, it's mm -hmm. not great. They they have a little trouble in the corners. In the yeah. Outfield. Yep. The infield's good. And yeah. uh, but but you know they, I mean they've already got like half the roster on the on the injury list. Yeah, Royce Lewis can get hurt. There's no question about it. He's oh man! Get, I still did you see the video? How the hell did he tear a muscle doing that? I, I would have to say, I hate to use the word, but uh, I have to use the word prone. You're prone to that kind of injury? I think so. I mean, it's like, it. like, look at Buxton. He always yeah. getting, he always yeah. got injured doing things that were just basic components of baseball. Very true. Well, so Hard far this year, you know, everybody's saying, he's back, he's back. Well, sure, but it's been like 10 games. <laughs> yeah. Jason M. in the chat says, K-Fan still does Vegas shows. K fan they're, does. They're there today and tomorrow. Hmm. Why did they go down this time of the year? I don't know, but they did apparently. Well, probably because it's cheaper, right? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose is, there is yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Somehow yeah. they made it work. Oh, so K fans out of town the next couple of days? Apparently. God, I haven't talked to those guys in a while. I, well, I usually only see Meat Sauce during the summer when we play golf. 
mm -hmm. play a lot of golf in the summer. And I, but I don't really see meat sauce in the winter much. No question about that. I ran into Rosie once in a while, you know. He, we, I see him at restaurants once in a while. I still, we were talking about Rosen this morning on the, on the morning show. And it just, remember that gal fan, how wonderful that was. Oh, that was just such an incredible time. It was. I wish I, I realized what was going on then. I, wish uh, so I, I didn't know anything about radio, you know? Right. And so I'm just coming in every day. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, you know, we're killing the ratings and all that. I, I just assumed that was what we, you know, were expected to do and, only in retrospect did I understand what an incredible time that was. It was. Minneapolis had never before and never will again have the number one rated morning show in America. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But look at how diverse that show was, which we never got credit for, by the way. We never yeah. got credit for the diversity that we brought to the state of Minnesota uh, on radio, on television, all the rest of it. I mean... You talk about a show that had three three blacks and two Jews on it back in 1986. What the hell? Look back at that. Think about that. Really? Yeah. Today you'd you'd need a lot of armed security, though. Yeah, today you'd need. I still don't understand. So you came to America from the Middle East, and now you're going to go on television and chant "Death to America, Death to Israel." Really? You've been given a free ride. We take you in, treat you like one of our own, and the first thing you do is stab us right in the back. Why? Well, it makes us feel like an Ivy League school, though. <laughs> That's very true. That's where it all comes from is the Ivy League schools, isn't it? Uh, I, you know, I, I think, I don't, I don't think they're what the Supreme Court would call originalists, you know. Probably. I really don't, uh, but. They have to. They have to be. Uh, they have to be opposed to many things, and they have to. They have to chant death to someone. Yeah, I suppose. You know, especially especially the the legacy kids, right? Well, the legacy kids are the problem. The problem, I would guess, they're the ones stirring the pot the most. Yeah, because it's time for them to rebel after growing up with that silver spoon in their mouth. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But that's that's you know the thing about. The thing about all this hassle about uh, about uh, uh, diversity, DEI, I think it's called, right? Mm -hmm. Diversity, yeah. equity, and what's the I? Inclusion. Inclusion, Inclusion yeah. The thing yeah. about that is that we didn't get so much publicity is along with that came supposedly the end of the legacy students. Now, they'll figure out a way to admit most of them. Yeah. But you got to believe that these legacy students, you know, the legacy students say at Harvard, uh, and and there are a ton of them. Probably ninety percent couldn't get into that school if it wasn't for the legacy thing. You're probably right, and I do believe it's about ninety percent. So that could certainly change the makeup as well as the culture of these schools. But I, let me ask you a question: As human beings, so you're sitting at home, you were welcomed into a country, uh, you're given a job, or you get a job. I'll say, let's not. You weren't even given a job, but you got a job. You're doing well. And then all of a sudden, one day, you decide to go on TV and blast the very people who let you in in the first place, gave you the life you have, and you hate them for that? And, and also, though, I don't know what the percentage would be, but probably 95% of immigrants who come here, they're just working hard. And they're doing jobs. I agree. No, I agree. So it's, it is a small, it's obviously it's a small percentage, but then it always is, right? Yeah. When things go bad. But how do you stand on TV and reconcile in your own brain that I'm calling for the death of an entire country who allowed me in and took care of me? No, it, it also reflects what's going on around the world. Yeah, there's you know, no doubt about I that. I mean, you've got, uh, in one case that, that I can think of, which is uh, devouring a lot of human beings. It's like, you know, there's one war criminal going up against another war criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, and Andy, this is for both you and Mike Gelfand. Do you see any good ending to all of this? Hmm. Not really. No. So either one of you guys just don't want to. Answer I mean, it can't end well for both parties. One of the parties has to have a bad ending. Yeah. I suppose that's which is problem. unfortunate because it, you know, I, I mean, it's easy enough to say, but it didn't really have to end that way. No, no. 
But no, you've got politicians right. and, and terrorists, you know, on either side who who feel like they will lose. Well, in the case in the case of uh, Netanyahu, I mean, that that's how he gets reelected all the time. Yeah. Is, is with wars. Yeah. So I think if he and he's a criminal anyway, and if he, you know, and I, I, uh, I have a lot of sympathy. I don't have really any empathy for them because it's hard to put them myself in that place. But I have a lot of sympathy for people in Israel because they're, you know, they don't, they're not big fans of this war. It's a lot of people, of course, you know, that's the thing. You know, a friend of mine, I think I told you, a friend of mine said his kid came home from from college one day, you know, and he all of a sudden he was using the phrase, you know. Like like Zionist trash, <laughs> right? He picked it up, right? God. And he he wasn't in favor oh. of, of killing off anyone, but but he picked up the phrase, you know. So this is a this is a common thing, and uh, and the re- the reality is that in Israel, as in the United States, most Jews do not really think of themselves as Zionists. Well, in this country, it's like ninety eight percent of Jews don't consider themselves Zionists. Right. It would be 99, except for the fact that the uber Orthodox Jews all have 10 kids. They do have a lot of children, don't they? Well, that's they, that's a mandate. Yeah, yeah they, it is a mandate. God wants them to. So outpopulate the others. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's what it's about. And then they they certainly accomplish that within the Jewish community because they, yeah. they are a much bigger percentage of the Jewish community than certainly than they were. 10 years ago and 20 before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just find the whole thing very, very sad that, that nobody can sit down and go, I look, I know we don't agree uh, politically, but do you really have to hate me for that? I really don't understand how you could be that upset because my politics, I got to be honest with you, do not run my life. I couldn't care Mm -hmm. less. uh, You know, like I said, I've been a Democrat, been a Republican, been in a center, been all of, you know, there's no comfortable spot, by the way. There's something wrong with all three of those positions, but there are some things right with all three positions as well. Well, do you remember the time, well, we were very young, but do you remember the time when politicians would debate and they'd say things like, well, you know, I think Mr. Nixon has a good point there. And yeah. for the most part, I agree with him, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. You, you think you'd hear that now? No, it's literally uh, Biden's going to ruin America. Trump's going to ruin America. I mean, it's about the destruction of your life. Now they're using that. Well, and, and right, and you've you've got you've got one guy saying that when he's president, he's gonna he's gonna incarcerate all the guys on the other side. Incarcerate who? Anybody who's his political enemy. Oh God, why would you say something like that? Well, that's because, how it is now. Everyone's just putting everyone in jail. Well, I think that I think that the base wants to hear that. They, they rally around that. Really? I, 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 I guess. Yeah. I mean, everything is. Here's a great example, which is actually just funny. But um, during the uh, during the uh, let's see, it was like the eclipse was what, about a week ago, right? Mm, yeah, a few days. Anyway. A few yeah, days. Yeah. A few days. Yeah. So. Um, the, uh, on, on Fox news, they were, they were urgently telling people that with the, with the, uh, eclipse at the Southern border, because, you know, Mexico was really kind of all started there. Yes. Right. Um, they were saying that because it was going to be dark for four and a half minutes, immigrants would pour, illegal immigrants would pour across the border. They already and have. Some people pointed out the fact that, well, there were going to be 11 and a half hours of darkness that night. That is true. Exactly. <laughs> so I, it's just common. But see, this is what I'm talking about. On both sides, you have these morons puking up their opinions on things that make no sense whatsoever. But people love to hear the argument. I don't know why they do, because I can't stand it, to tell you the truth. Oh, uh, too much is enough. Oh, God, it really is. Uh, yeah, seriously, you want the lying that these news organizations do is just unbearable. Look, I know that politicians are the worst human beings on earth. I've really come to a very clear understanding of that. But it's also the news reporters. I mean, that report came out the other day. A publicly funded company, every taxpayer pays for that into that company. It's National Public Radio, Right. So you yeah. think they'd have an even keel position, wouldn't you? 
you know, I that thing, I don't, I guess, do you listen to, and this is, he's talking about radio, right? Radio, yes, National yeah. Public Radio. I don't hear much news on radio, um, but I do watch occasionally the, the PBS News Hour. Mm-hmm. And I think they play it way too much down the middle. Oh, do they really? Because the radio does not. Yeah, well, that's see, I was that's the thing I wondered about because I just almost never hear it on the radio. Well, here's the deal: eighty-seven people are in the management. Eighty-seven have something to do with the management of NPR, mm-hmm. whether it's the salespeople or the producers or the writers or whatever. Eighty-seven people. Eighty-seven of them are Democrats. Well, it's not a surprise. But why would you do that? Everybody's paying the bill. Shouldn't you have a pretty even keel mix? That would be a good idea, don't you think? Who's going to make them? Well, yeah, the thing is, you know, problem. the thing is about that, it is people who uh, who uh, are um, they're mostly liberals. You know, we always hear about their, well, you know, journalists are too liberal and all that. But it's liberals who are drawn to that profession. Yes, that's true. Because the, the, the heart and soul of journalism is challenging authority, is questioning power. Yeah. And that's something that liberals do. Well, everybody does, don't they? I mean, well, they should. Yeah, no, regardless of who is in power, they, they should. That's what, what's what it's all about. You know, this, the Socratic method requires that. But I don't know. When I worked at the Minneapolis Tribune, I would I would have to say that eh, probably about 75 percent of the reporters there probably leaned left. But yeah, there were at least 25 yeah. percent who leaned right. So there was some balance and, and as much as you could have, really. Why? Yeah. I, to be honest with you, the 87 if 27 of them were conservative and 60 percent were liberal, I'd go, yeah, that makes sense. Because of what you said, they're drawn to the business. Yeah. But 87 to nothing makes no sense at all. Well, yeah, that's clear favoritism. There's no question. Mm. Uh, why, do we do, why do we allow something like that? Well, uh, I, I mean, there's so many answers to that. I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. That, well, and again, I, I, I watch the news and I watch this and I read that. And I, I'm not a big fan of either one of them. They just lie their ass off for their own benefit. And it is to them all about making money it has nothing to do with serving the people well like especially with the with the networks yes. uh, it'll be a huge news day right i mean every day is a pretty big news day yeah, yeah but but they'll be leading off with a near airplane collision you know over texas or something yeah. no one got yeah. killed there was no big deal but they're leading with that of yeah. course because there's video Oh, yeah. Video is a huge thing on national news now. You're right. It's a huge deal to have video of anything. Yeah. And then they'll play it 17 times per minute for the next six hours. Yeah, very true. Do people fall for that kind of rhetoric on Fox and CNN? I mean, do people actually believe they're telling the truth? Because yep. neither one of them are. Yes, they do. They really believe that what, what your, my side says is right. Well... Do a little research, but I suppose people don't have time to do research anymore, do they? Yes, they do. They just don't do it. They yeah, they, do they're it. not interested. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't you want to know if the people are puking at you every day are telling the truth? That'd be well, great. one of the problems about doing research is you have to be savvy enough to know when you're being lied to in the first place. Yeah, I suppose so it's like true. if I know that I'm being lied to by the network media, then... I'm going to do research in a very different way than most people. They're just going to go on Twitter, search a keyword, and whatever Twitter says, the consensus, that must be the truth. Also, also people people want their biases to be confirmed. They don't want them to be challenged. It feels good to have your, to be right. Yeah. Or to, you know, believe that you're right anyway. I'm sick of always being right. It's wearing me out. (laughs) It's, It's just time for a change of pace. I've had people say to me, like, you know, you know, they, I've had people say to me because I, uh, I could be somewhat stubborn at times. Not say, you. They'd say, "Oh, it must be really tough to be right all the time," and I'd say, "I'd say, yeah, but you know, on the other hand, it must be tough to be wrong all the time too, huh?" Yeah, think about it. See, and that, of course, that of course allowed us to come to terms with each other and compromise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Yes, <laughs> only dialogue. I'm sure that's what happened. There's no question about hey, it. Hey, but but let's face it. I mean. To, uh, in the morning, during the morning show, we polarize people. Well, that was management's idea. 
Well, and, but it wasn't all, it wasn't so much, at least it certainly wasn't, you know, generally it wasn't politically. It's just. No, a lot of it, yeah, a definitely. lot of it was not. Yeah, you're right. There it was no just question. our general demeanor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not putting up with any BS from anybody. Yeah. We didn't suck up to anybody and that bothered some, some people. Yeah. Because if they have to suck up, then you do too. You think that's what the argument is? I think so, yeah. yeah it it makes it sense. I, I, you know. I, I love the guy, but I remember when, when Wellstone said that our job was to inform and educate people, and we started laughing hysterically. Yes, we did. <laughs> I don't think so. Old Paulie was not a big fan of mine. I know that. Yeah, uh, you know, we had him on the uh, we had him on the TV show, Mark and I. Oh, you and, did. Uh, and we had him. Uh, we had him. We 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 had a guy on the show who did a really great Rudy Boschwitz. And of oh, course, God. Wellstone had defeated Rudy Boschwitz. All right. So, Wellstone was you know he was a he was a, a very accomplished wrestler. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was he was a college wrestler, high school and college. Oh, okay. And he, he did very well. So we had the fake Boschwitz and Wellstone wrestle. <laughs> So Wellstone was, he did have a sense of humor, you know? I will tell you one thing, Mike, that you topped everybody by adding John Gallus to your show. He was phenomenal on that show. Oh, that was just luck, you know? I just, we just kind of stumbled into it. and Did you? And he was a huge part of the show. We, like the first <laughs> time we ever did anything with him, we, we were like, yeah, wow. We struck gold here. We had him the first time we had him in a bit. <laughs> He, and of course, he was just everything he did was was hilarious. Yes, uh, and uh, he was a good announcer. But you know, he, but the thing was, he'd never done. You could tell he'd always wanted to do this sort of comedic bits. You know, yeah, so he'd, right. he'd go over the top, but it was funny, and, and it was better that way. So we had a bit one time. We 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 were we went we went through a one. I can't remember what the store was, but it was one of these stores where you know, all, you could find all sorts of bizarre things that no one would ever buy except that they were, they made great, <laughs> they were just great gimmicks, you know, yeah. what, was, what was the, the Texatanka, the big store there where you could get like anything from dowels to dolls. Yeah. That's you don't right. remember the, sh what's the yeah. name of the place? I think it's still there. Oh, is it really? Yeah. So we uh, found, we found a, um, the Texatanka shopping center is still there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, and this store is still there, but I, it's been so long since I've been there. I'm at their website. It's, it's actually kind of like the anchor of that Texatanka. The X-Man Surplus store? Yes, that's it. Yeah, there X you go. Yeah. yeah, we had an X-Man over by my house in um, St. Paul. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we bought, Mark and I went through there buying odd things, and we found a, um, a uh, fake, it was, it was like a, a, an owl on a stick is what it was. <laughs> And uh, okay. so, so we we claim that it was a actually that actually could be used as a weather vane, right? So sure. we we told uh, we told uh, we told Gallus that he should like you know run under the lawn of WCCO TV, which is where we did the show, you know, and to to test it as as a weather vane. So he loved that. And so we got him, you know, doing take after take, running as fast as he could. And uh, then um, somebody came up to us, somebody from the news section and said, oh, that's funny. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, yeah, it's just real funny. You got a guy who had surgery, had heart surgery like a month ago. <laughs> we, we had no idea. Well, how are you supposed to know that unless he told you? I know. I, he never told us. We didn't know. But, you know, we, we still thought it was funny, though. <laughs> Well, I'll tell but you that was, he would do anything, and he would make everything better. Yep, he was phenomenal. There's no question. Uh, my mother, you know, he was a North Side guy. John Gallus yeah. grew up in North Minneapolis. Yeah. And my mother was still uh, the working the the diner at Merwin's Drugstore, which is no, no, it's not even there anymore. It's corner of uh, what was that, the Lindale and Broadway, I guess. Yeah. Um, that was with a Y, by the way. It was Lindale with a Y. No, I mean the Merwin's. Merwin's. Wasn't it? Didn't that have a Y in it? I don't remember. I thought that. it was M E R Y N. It could be. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. But my mother worked there forever, and the reason I even bring that up is because John Gallus, North Side boy that he was, uh, I would see him constantly. Well, not constantly, but a lot of times walking around the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and he had a relative with special needs, 
and he always kept track of that person. Yeah. He was like he was like the godfather of the special needs relative. He oh. was so kind to that person, I can't even tell you. Yeah, was that was John. Yep. He always irritated guy. us, though, because every week he'd say, well, you know, I really want to do the who's on first bit. I, I've got the whole thing memorized. <laughs> and, and I'd say, I'd say, I hate that. I hate that. Every time I have ever heard it, I really? hated it. It gave me a migraine. <laughs> but he still pestered. And one day we said, well, we just, you know, we got to let him do it. He's never going to stop. And so he did it. And he was after that. He, you know, he'd, he'd accomplished what he wanted to. Yeah, there's no question. And Andy, I still hated it, by the way, even when he did it. I understand. Andy, you're going to love this story. He also hosted the Laurel and Hardy show every Sunday morning, where Laurel and Hardy would be on for their 20-minute their snippets and all that kind of stuff. And there was a picture of Laurel and Hardy behind him every time he did it. I did not know this, but uh, that prop was on a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. So it was literally like four feet by mm -hmm. seven feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of an inch. And he's doing the show. I'm watching the show because I watched every Sunday because I loved him and Laurel and Hardy. Mm -hmm. I'm watching the show. And all of a sudden I'm looking and it's behind him, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking and the plywood is moving uh -oh. very, very slowly. And then finally it got to the tipping point. I don't know why nobody warned him because I got to believe the, the crew saw the thing moving. Yeah. Fell over and hit him right in the back of the head. I well, yes, never... yes. I've seen the video of that. Oh, my God. I guess it wasn't video, but I've seen the, you know, the film of it. The film of it, yeah. yeah. So, I know what I would have said when that thing hit me in the head. I would have said that fucking Boschwitz. <laughs> <laughs> blame it on Rudy. Uh, Rudy. Plywood, oh, Minnesota. That's right. Plywood, Minnesota. You can blame him for that. Yeah. But how can you set up a prop to the point where it can in any way tip forward? Yeah, you wouldn't think. Well, the thing had been there a long time. Well, it had it's been true. there a long plywood time. Plywood isn't the sturdiest thing in the universe. And it wasn't attached. It was just a piece of plywood leaned up against the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not a good idea. Put a strap on it or something. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Dial her back. That's all. I'm really glad you brought up John. It just put me in a good mood thinking about John Gallus. So thank oh. you for bringing him up. I just, I did. I, he was just a wonderfully talented man, a nice man, a caring man. He was, he was what, you know, I wanted to be. Never worked out. But yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying. But you were very lucky. You worked, you worked with him. Z, I mean, how Z, I haven't seen Z in years now. Yeah, you and me both. He just kind of disappeared. I always liked him too. He's a very nice guy. Yeah, he, you're right. I, and I especially like the word you was. <clears throat> Oh, there! Boy, look at the time. We'd love to stay in. Schmier. We had a little but, falling out. Um, I didn't know you had a falling out. I never knew that. Yeah, he went through a period of time when you know he was kind of down and out. Yeah. And and uh, this wasn't that long after my brother died, and uh, he thought it would be funny to talk about killing himself every time I saw him. Why hmm. was that funny? I don't know. I, I kind of took it personally, to be honest. But well, that was Mark. You know, once he started on something, he couldn't oh, give yeah. it up. And that was part of his charm. Of, of one, I mean, he was, look, he was a great co-host. He was, I oh, loved yeah. doing the show with him. He was a mm -hmm. generous performer. He, um, you know, he would set me up. I would set him up. It was a great relationship. So I have nothing but, you know, good thoughts about Mark most of the time. But that was just a tough period, yeah. And then after he worked with you, you worked with Bo Capra for a while, didn't he? Or was that while he was working with you? Well, the, I met Mark when Mark and I were both working with Bo. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. Because Bo had, Bo and Mark, I, th I think both of them had started this sort of like boutique radio commercial business. Right. Yeah. And then um, then they invited me to be part of it. And uh, so the three of us, you know, we did a lot of stuff together. And... Um, it was nice. Bo had this like is this huge office. It was it was on uh, Hennepin Avenue. Yep, I remember in, it. In Uptown. Yep. And he had this huge office. We were, we were in a duplex, and then there was a little tiny al alcove above it, and that's where Mark had to work. So, like, <laughs> you know, he could hit his head there if he wasn't careful. And it was an interesting. I it was an interesting uh, office culture because. 
we were working in a building that was owned by a, 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 a dentist, a pediatric dentist. So all day long, we're, we're trying to do funny stuff and we're hearing kids shrieking in pain. Oh my God. I don't think the dentist was as, you know, let's just say it wasn't a pain free kind of operation. Mm, possibly not. So, has- uh, so eventually I just, I just finished the story real quick. Eventually the dentist decided that he wanted to be in show business instead. You know, oh, he did? Because, because he got the kind of the showbiz thing from Bo, right? Sure. So he went out to L.A. and he became a, a, a driver for, a, um, for a, a guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but a guy who was a, 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 big, a big director in the horror business show. Really? This guy so- did horror shows, yeah. And so the, the guy who had been the dentist loved that job, and I assume that he, uh, you know, he ended his career as a limo driver. For the uh, director. But it makes, I mean, don't Dennis make a hell of a lot more money than limo drivers? Well, this guy, I don't know. <laughs> God. Well, you would think so, yes. I don't That's think Dennis, well, dentistry is, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty lucrative. Yeah, if, if my bills are any indication. <laughs> any indication. Oh, yes. I think dentists make plenty of money. Yeah. Yeah, seems like it. I don't know. The one thing about that. Uh, it's just reminiscing, of course, ladies and gentlemen. There used to be three theaters right by their office, the Uptown Theater, the World Theater. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of the And then the Lagoon came in. Uh, Lagoon, that's right. The Lagoon came in. That's exactly right. But that neighborhood was vibrant. It was hopping. Everything was wonderful. Calhoun Square, which is now called, it's called something else now because it can't be Calhoun anymore. I think it's called uh, Calhoun Fear now. Calhoun Fear. Yeah, there yeah. you go. But you could wander through there. There was always something going on. A couple of great restaurants in there. There was a lot Mm -hmm. of stuff going to Calhoun. I haven't been in Calhoun Square, no, I bet you, in 25 years. Yeah, well, that's that says it all. What happened to that neighborhood? I, you know, things change, and uh, a lot of a lot of areas get gentrified. But then, what would be the opposite of gentrified? Yeah, what would be? Did it get too dangerous around there? Yeah, yeah. That's what I understand. That's what I was told anyway. It's what's just too dangerous to go down there now. Why yeah. did we ever allow that? I will never understand why we allowed people to be dangerous in, in the marketplace. I don't know. I mean, there, there are always criminals around, and for some yeah. reason they, they just they wanted to be there. You know, I, Uptown used to be synonymous with, with like, culture, with, yes. with yep. trends. Yep was hip and you're right and then like all of a sudden it wasn't i like i don't live anywhere near uptown right but, but i've i have apartment buildings around me like you know the uptown square you know they they name they name their their apartments using the word uptown and really? they don't they don't seem to understand that it drives people away these yep. days these days That's it does true. there's no question about it I don't know. It's just that it, I didn't mean to make myself sad, but I just did. Because I used to love to go to that market right there in the corner of 31st and, and Hennepin. Oh, sure. Yeah. What was the name of that market again? It was a great market. I'm trying to remember, but I sure, sure remember the market. It wasn't Paradise, no. What the hell was I, I don't know, but I, what was the name of the restaurant that, that was so trendy? Famous and, Dave's. Well, Famous Dave's, yeah, but that came in later. But the, the restaurant that was real trendy, right at the corner, the exact corner of Hennepin and, um, was it Hennepin and Lake, I guess? No, you're absolutely right. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I can't either. But can't it was, it was, that was everybody I knew was, was, you know, it just, it was a place. It was sort of like, it was a very hip place, but also it was a place, I think, where people went to meet each other. I think that is true. There's no question about it. And it was between the Arby's on Emerson and Lake, uh, at that time, Lake Calhoun. There's the Rainbow Cafe. The Rainbow Cafe was <laughs> That's been at Lake since 1919, apparently. Is it still there? Uh, apparently. Well, I don't think so. I don't know. I think it might have. Let's see. Rainbow Cafe. But I know one thing. If it was still there, it would. the, the waitresses would still all be older than me. <laughs> They always were, weren't they? Oh, no, it was great. Rainbow Cap. There's a Rainbow Restaurant now. That's Chinese. But oh, it's a Chinese place. The Rainbow Cafe closed in 1979. So no, oh. it's been a while. It's not there. But it lives on in our memories. Now, apparently, it does. 
Well, it was there for 60 years, so that's pretty good. Yep, 60 years yeah, they, of business. Yeah, they did pretty well. There. Oh, Chino Latino now. Oh, um, yeah, Chino Latino. Yeah, that makes that sense. That might be what you were thinking of. That's kind of been in Lake as well, and that was trendy for a long time. Well, that was real trendy. I remember one day, I'd never been there, and I, I was with someone, and we decided we were going to have lunch somewhere around there. And, and so he said, uh, how about Chino Latino? And I said, yeah, I want to see what it's about. So you may remember at Chino Latino, you went downstairs. You came in, and then you went downstairs to the restaurant. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, it wasn't like a long flight, but it was just, you know, basement level sort of. And so all I remember is – we opened the door and we were confronted by this cacophony of, of, of sound. It was like being in the middle of, uh, say, uh, a Times Square on New Year's Eve. And so that's as far as I got. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's close, too. So, hey. Yeah, that's right. You know, 2020. You know, what was the upstairs one? The one you went upstairs on the same block. There was another club up there. God, what the hell is the name? Yeah, of I know what you're talking about. The reason I bring it up is because back in the days when I might have had a cocktail or two, mm-hmm. I will never forget. That. You've met my friend Kendall Norberg, haven't you? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, Kendall. Kendall's big a big guy. fella. Big, really Wrong. big guy, very muscular. We're sitting there, and some guy's just being a prick to me. Just, you know, and Kendall looks at me and goes, just ignore the guy. He's a waste of time. It's ridiculous. And the guy just wouldn't, wouldn't stop. And so finally I got up to go over and confront the guy. As I was getting up, Kendall grabbed my face and set me back down and said, it's not worth your time, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I got the message, Kendall, on many different levels. I didn't stuff, realize but... he was a, a peacemaker. Oh, God, yeah. Kendall's very even. Well, you did not want to piss off Kendall Norberg. I will yeah. tell you that. Oh, well, I God. never did, that's for sure. No, I, we tried to steer clear of all that stuff. I kind of like reminiscing about this stuff because it. I just went all the way back to my grandfather, my father's father, telling me, who, who lived, I think he died in Long Prairie, Minnesota, mm. many, which is where I was born, went right. back. But he was living in the Twin Cities, and this would have been like 1900. So he's like a 15-year-old boy or a 12-year-old boy, something like that. Mm. Uh, what became later on in life... Hennepin and Lake Street. What did he used to do on Hennepin and Lake Street? It wasn't Hennepin and Lake Street yet, but that area that became Hennepin and Lake Street, what did he do as a little boy? I uh, uh, sold newspapers. Nope. He went deer hunting. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Come on. Deer hunting. Think of it like the turn of the century, 1900, there was probably nothing there. Yeah. Well, and there's still people there with guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they're any deer. They're hunting the most dangerous game now. <laughs> and the question I would have about, you know, we talk about Uptown. So what I wonder is like, okay, so where is the new Uptown? Is yeah, it, good was question. it replaced by anything? Andy, do you know anything about a new Uptown or, or an area that would be considered the same as that? Is it on top of the old Uptown? Is the very yeah, maybe uptown. The, the very Uptown? There you go. Uh, no, I don't. I mean, I stopped kind of paying attention to Minneapolis four years ago sad. when I left. I just, so sad. I don't know. I don't care about it anymore. It was so much fun, though. I mean, it was just, God, it was just. It great. was fun living there, but. Uh, would it be, living. would it be in that area, the, the north of downtown? You mean in north Minneapolis? No, well, no, just, just, just the northern edge of downtown. Like you're talking, there's a lot about. of trendy stuff there. Just well, like the, where, for example, where your uh, studio used to be. Yeah, that yeah, was I in the uh, North Loop area. Yeah, North Loop. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Tasca Building. That was it. Was west of downtown more. Oh, okay. It was called the North Loop, but it was west of downtown. Yeah, it really? was. Yeah, well, I. That just shows you why I failed as a cab driver. That was. <laughs> Did you going fail? North until we hit it. It's <laughs> it'll happen eventually. I'm sure. Around the globe a couple times, everything would be good. Well, yeah, there's a lot of that though. There's like uh, the Southeast Avenue is actually like west of the city or something like that. There's mm. all those directionally named things in Minneapolis are complete nonsense. Yeah. I don't know why they did it that way. Well, which reminds me, you know, I, I north Northeast Minneapolis is very trendy these days, but I don't it think is, there's yeah. anything like uptown. No, but probably the closest to it, I would guess. You yeah. Know, that area you're talking and about. And that, that, that area is gentrified. 
Yes, it is. There's no. That's one thing I will tell you about being a teenager and then in my early 20s. One thing you learned when you went over to the, the, the Mississippi River on the bridge, whether it be the Broadway Bridge, the Lowry Bridge, whatever, the advice to you was don't start trouble over northeast because yeah. you ain't going to like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's not. that's because everybody was either a cop or a cop's kid. That's true. That's 100 <laughs> percent true. There's no question about it. But all right. We only got about a minute left. Any wrap up ideas? I don't believe so. No, I'm just uh, I'm still like, you know, inhaling the fumes from the good vibes of the eclipse. We Nothing saw people come life. together there. We people sure actually did. flooded into Indianapolis. You know it's a great event when people are going to Indianapolis. <laughs> Maybe some of them even stayed. <laughs> you might be right. All right, that's going to do it. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Talk.